Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. So this is our first video, um, our first SolidWorks video on how to use SolidWorks to build components and at the same time we are going to talk about how these components are designed, um, what they're made out of, why they're designed in a certain way, certain features that you might not be aware of. So what we're going to do in this first little mini-series is build a um, four-stroke single-cylinder engine. It's very, very basic. We're going to start off very simple. And I'm just going to kick off and you're just going to have to keep up with me. So, hopefully you're, you've had a play with um, SolidWorks before, your planes, etc. Um, and how the whole orientation of SolidWorks works. Um, so we'll just get on with it. So the first thing we want to really do is start off with a crankshaft. So what I like to do is I like to basically make the centre of my crankshaft and where the crank pin is going to be. And the first thing we need to decide on is a stroke. So we'll just say it's a 60 millimetre stroke. So there's two ways you can do that. You can do 60 divided by 2 or 30. So this is our offset. This is our centre. We're going to use the origin as a centre and this is our crank pin. Next thing we need to do is we need to decide on a crank pin size, just for simplicity, let's just call it 25 millimetres. And then after that I like to then do my crank circle. So how big is your crank circle going to be? That depends. When you're doing an actual design, you just want to do, you calculate that, etc. What the yield strength of this is. We're starting off very simple, we'll get into stuff like that in the future. But here I have my full circle crank throw, and we're going to call that 95, just because it's a nice round number. And then we can use the trim tool to get rid of the crank circle, because obviously we don't want that to be involved in the actual part. And then we'll extrude that outwards, and we'll call it 10 millimeter thick, because that's nice and round number. And then we, there we go, we have our crank throw. The next thing we want to do is give it an actual shaft, the main journal, we'll call it that big, and we'll call that 30 millimeters just because it's nice and round. We'll extrude that out and we'll give that a nice 25 millimeter. And then obviously we want to clean up some edges a bit, so we will chamfer them ever so slightly with a one mil, that looks nice and we want to put a fillet in here. So the reason why crankshafts have fillets is because any kind of right angle is a weakness, it's where cracks are going to propagate. So this surface and this journal here are perpendicular, i.e. right angles, and if you put any force on this journal it is going to bend at this point and that is where a crack is going to form. So they actually roll fillets, there's an excess of metal, and they roll it in there uh, when it's quite hot. Um, to one, it's kind of like a forging process, so it strengthens this area by crushing basically all the metal into a fillet. And number two is this dissipates the forces when it comes under stress. So that's that. We can fanny around with the rest of it later. What we'll do is we'll save that and we will make a new folder and we will call it uh, four stroke engine vid. So it's very important that you start getting into the um, routine of naming your parts properly and all the rest of it. So this is crank throw, throw one and we'll save that. So that's that done. The next thing we want to do is we want to open a new assembly. When it actually does open. And you want to get straight into the assembly. Um, so you've got places to put your parts because other parts might need uh, a relationship or um, need to have datums or whatever when you put the whole thing together. And you can't build them without it. So we'll browse for our part. We've got our crank throw number one. We put that in. Now for the time being we'll be shifting things in and out of um, in and out of assemblies. But you just want to kind of build assemblies. And another good thing is to put assemblies in assemblies. That makes things a lot easier. 
So the next thing we want to do is we want to put another one in and then comes to the mates. So we obviously want the journals to be, oops, we want the journals to be in line with each other. So we go to mate and it kind of works out straight away that you're probably going to go for concentric. This little icon down here is going to flip it for us. So that's that. The next thing we want to do is move it out of the way and then our crank pin wants to be concentric as well. So we'll select them to make them concentric. So you'll notice at the moment that nothing will move and that's because this is our main, um, our initial part and that is in place. If you actually go to your mates you will see that it's not there. That's because this is basically where your origin lies, this is where the centre of the universe is as this is concerned. And that's why we'll make this an assembly and then insert that into another assembly later on. But there's nothing really to worry about straight away. What we'll do is we'll also space this out and there's all your different mates here. There's the distance mate and we'll call it, I don't know, 25 millimeters. We can change all these later on. That's far too big. Let's call it 15. You've got to remember that the distance between the two crank throws is going to be pretty much nearly the size or the thickness of your conrod. So I want to leave that the way it is like that. And then we're pretty much there. So we want to save that as a crankshaft assembly. Assembly. So now we've got all this set up, we now know how a throw, so our stroke, our stroke is 60 millimetres, and we also have a good relationship to how big our crank pin is should be. So the first thing we're going to do is, not that one, is insert a new part, we'll use this surface, we'll go to that view just so we can see, and it's always good to use the squared view and we're going to make it that big. Now you could just easily make that circle the size of this throw. The problem with doing that is that this circle is now in relation to these crank throws. Um, we're not going to do interference fits and tolerances and etc just yet. We will get to that in the later videos when we start getting into more stuff. This is just a an easy first video just to get of a first series just to get people into um, how this all works and for the real real beginners really. So we want to put it up to this surface. Now what SolidWorks can do is you can go to a menu here and it says up to surface and we can click on here. The only problem is is that now that we can't really we can't really move the relationship. If we move the crank throws the pin will grow backwards and forwards which seems like a really good idea. The problem with doing that is is later down the road if you get into the habit of doing that and these things aren't always going to be together. This is fine for doing this because the pin always goes with the crank. If the crank throws growing distance, if we change the dimension between the two, then the crank pin has to follow suit. That isn't so much of an issue with this, but later on down the line when you do other parts like this, if you're um, mating things or extruding things up to surfaces and you move them surfaces, things can get really, really messy. So to not get confused and to not run into problems later on and this is a good practice to get involved in is to go to evaluate oops no hit that surface hit this surface and that'll give you a dimension the dimension is 35 millimeters so now when we do our extrusion like so we can put 35 millimeters in there now obviously if you change and then we're going to flip it because it's got its knickers in a twist now obviously if you change this dimension uh, between the crank throws, the pin is going to stay the same, which when you get with really complicated comp uh, components and stuff, that isn't a bad thing. It means that you have to check your work, and it means that if you do move things, that things start, don't start to go crazy. Because if you were to put a hole perpendicular to this, and this hole is meant to be 20 millimeters from here, but you expand the distance and the relationship has to change, and you don't notice, then things don't line up. And then when you've got 50 components, you're like, what the fuck is going on? You've completely lost yourself. Any road. So we've done this crank pin. The problem with this crank pin is, is that it's solid. And if we go, if we get out of that and we select this component here, open the component so this is our crank pin and it's just a simple cylinder 
if we go to material here, right click and go to edit material, we can just pick a, there's not many, this is the base standard one, I do have extra materials in the one I use at work, but I'm just using a standard license for this one, so we want to go, just say tool steel, and we apply that to that. One of the good things you can do in, in evaluation there, we have mass properties, and the mass properties tell us that this thing weighs 135 grams. You might not think that's a lot, that is shitloads. So what can we do, and what do engine designers do, is they lighten up the wrist pin, the crank pin, so what we can do is we can sketch on this surface here, find the center, do that and we can cut out the center of it and we'll call it 15 that's a nice and round number and then we'll exit that and then here we can do up to surface because this is one this is one component this is one part this is one continuous piece of steel and then just for the niceties of things we want to chamfer these edges like so and it always goes to 10 millimeters, which is really annoying. We won't do that, we'll do a bit smaller. And booyah, we have a nice cudgeon pin. And then when you go to evaluate and go to properties, it's 85 grams, so we have lost 15, 40, 50, 50 grams. So we've nearly cut its weight by a third, or by a third. So we want to save that. And we want to save that as a wrist pin, gudgeon pin, whatever you want to call them, crank pin. We'll just call it a wrist pin because I'm used to saying that. Then we save that. That then goes back into this assembly and you can see we've got a lovely pin there. And that's mainly the reason why they do. Eventually we will go on to uh, simulations and uh, stress testing and stuff like that. We'll actually do a bit on stress testing a crank pin. And you can see the difference between uh, of what forces a solid crank pin can take versus a hollow one and weight is everything in engines especially rotating and reciprocating masses which we'll eventually get onto right so that's pretty much our crankshaft sorted just like that and um, next video we will do the piston so we'll sort out our bore and then we can then move on to conrod etc and so on and so forth and move on right hope that helps you out and uh, I'll see you in a bit